Hey guys, welcome back. October is a fantastic time to spearfish here in the Florida Keys. The bait starts to show up really thick, the air and water temps are cooling down so the wahoo season's heating up, and it's usually not too windy yet, so we can still sneak out on the bay boat for some spearfishing. We started by catching some bait at a grass flat in about 20 feet of water. We were having some trouble getting the heavy 12 foot net open here, but the bait was so thick that it doesn't really matter. We were using chum to bring the pilchards up to the back of the boat, and then once they got very thick, we'd throw the net. We were using this really heavy net because it sinks really fast, and when you're in about 20 feet of crystal clear water, those pilchards get out of the way really quick. After throwing the net a handful of times, we headed out to the reef to do a bit of drifting. This time of year is still a little bit early for Wahoo, but we had heard some people were catching them, so we decided to give it a shot. Before I could even turn my camera on, I saw Jake lining up on a nice sized Wahoo. Unfortunately, the Wahoo was so far here, you can't even see the fish from my view. I immediately throw my throw flasher as hard as I can in the direction that the Wahoo shot off in. Once these fish get shot at, it's pretty rare for them to stick around. I slowly swim up to the throw flasher, and the Wahoo meets me there. I only had a real gun on this day, so I had to get super close to make a shot. So instead of chasing the Wahoo, I decide to swim directly to the throw flasher so that the fish thinks I'm going after this flashy thing instead of him. When I turn around though, the Wahoo is long gone. So while this may look like a, a lot of nothing, um, they are in fact doing their best to keep the fish in their view, but also not scare it. We're working. This we, we were in some thicker stuff and then now we're marking some smaller stuff, but I think they're in what we were marking originally. Yeah. We, nice one. It was a nice walk, man. It, was, it wasn't a bad one. You might have thought he was small because he was so far away, but I was, dude, I, I, I studied my shot. I like, <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I got this thing. Like, nice. I knew it was, it was far. But I'm like, oh, I, I can get it. Used to those damn bluefin tuna guns. I know, that's what I was thinking on the way up. On this drift, I was watching Jake sit at about 30 feet down by our flasher rig. That's when I saw him completely turn around, stretch out his gun, and take a shot. I couldn't see what he shot, and it didn't take off like a wahoo would, so I figured he shot something like a yellow jack. Jake came up and shouted that he got a cobia, and I took a dive to take a look. Jake had a pretty good holding shot in this fish, but what we wanted to do was get a stone shot so that we didn't have to fight the fish to get him in the boat. I swam down and put a shaft right through its head, but I think I missed the stone shot by about an inch. We don't get a ton of cobia here in the Florida Keys, so this was certainly a surprise and we were super happy about it. Cobia. Awesome. I'm currently sitting at about 50 feet down with a big school of rainbow runners. When we come across a big school of bait like this, I like to take a dive and see if there are any larger predators beneath them. After a while, I check my watch and decide it was just about time to start heading up. I take one last look around and then take a double take. Just above me, this wahoo is descending like an angel from heaven. Unfortunately, this angel stopped descending and started ascending as soon as it saw what I was. I then see another, even bigger wahoo off in the distance. Low on air, I try to maintain my composure and slowly swim up towards the fish. This wahoo was having no part in that, so I decided to head straight up to the surface so I could throw my throw flasher and go after the fish with a fresh breath of air. As soon as I stopped chasing the fish and headed straight to the surface, one of the wahoo decided to check me out. I got a bit excited and decided to go for the fish before reaching the surface. And as I shift my motion back towards the fish, the wahoo starts to turn away. And while I still have a good opportunity, I pull the trigger. But the gun doesn't fire. My safety was still on, and I quickly pop the safety off and pull the trigger again. But in the short second it took me to do so, the wahoo got out of my range. I was pissed. Fuck! Big ass wahoo. On this drift, I'm sitting at about 50 feet, taking a look around. As you can see, I'm kind of looking up at the surface to see if I see any fish silhouetted. And when I look down, I see this massive school of yellow jack. Mm, 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 mm. 
These fish are actually very good eating, so I started to line up on a fish. By the time I choose a fish I wanted to shoot, I decided to hold off, because as soon as I go and pull the trigger, I know that a wahoo will be around. It was still incredible seeing this many fish, and it just goes to show how selective you can be while spearfishing. There's no need to kill something just for the hell of it. This is another drift on another day. I'm making a drop down to the throw flashers, and as soon as I level out my dive, I lock eyes with this wahoo well within my range. I instinctually reach for my GoPro and of course turned it off, so you'll just have to use your imagination on this one. This is the first time I've shot a wahoo with a real gun, and on its first run, the fish took nearly all of my line. Jake reacts quickly and unclips his float and tries to attach it to my real gun. I keep light pressure on the fish, because without a slip tip, Wahoo can pull off the spear very easily. When the fish gets close, Jake takes a second shot, but it skips right off the side of the Wahoo's face. Jake doesn't know it yet, but his $100 shaft is heading straight to the bottom because his float is no longer attached to his gun and is attached to mine. With a second shot now out of the question, I pulled the wahoo as close as I could and wrapped both my hands around its tail and hung on for dear life. <laughs> Holy shit! I barely got him. Hell yeah! Woo! Watch out! Wahoo season has begun. Right before this dive, Jake had missed a yellow jack, and on his way up from his dive, he told me he saw some massive African pompano down deep. I had never shot an African pompano before, so I tried to stay calm and catch my breath as fast as I could. As I dove down, I closed my eyes and tried to relax to keep my heart rate down. When I felt like I was at a good depth, I started grunting and leveled out, but before I could even finish my grunt sequence, I saw an African pompano. I got my gun ready, but decided to go for the second fish that was a bit smaller because it was closer. I took the shot and held onto the line while I swam to the surface to keep the fish off of the bottom structure. Tried to come off. I thought I hit him good. When I got to the surface, the line was slack. APs are known for their strength, so I figured I had lost the fish. Fortunately, my shot was still holding, and I had really hurt the fish. Jake was still reloading, so I carefully pulled the AP to the surface. Just like the wahoo in the last clip, I grabbed onto its tail with both hands and held on. You're welcome! <laughs> Fuck yeah. Dude, I told you to get an AP today. Woo! You're six, man. Oh my god. Six. Hold it up yeah. for me. And that was like the whole thing. Alright, so. <laughs> right? <laughs> First AP, baby. Woo! Yeah, yeah, that's perfect. <laughs> yeah, man, some ice. Yeah, yeah, man, some ice. If you couldn't tell, Jake wanted to shoot one too, and on our very next drift, he did just that. Jake didn't hit his fish in the gills like I did, so the fish fought a lot more. I breathed up and took a dive to take a look at his fish. I tried to get the fish in the brain, but I must have missed by an inch or two, just like I did with the cobia earlier in the video. Jake had hit his fish in the lower belly area, which fortunately held pretty good. AP? <laughs> Limited. Limited on African Papado. He knit us a sweater though this time. That's gonna be fun to untangle. Here you go. Yep. Holy shit, dude, you're right. You just Holy grind and come shit. right Why in. would this one be on? <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! 
fucking crazy. Holy I crap. Bigger. I think so too. Oh. <laughs> We're gonna have to do oh, some pictures God right damn. next to Yeah, he knit you quite the sweater. After those two fish, we had our daily limit of African pompano and more fish than we could possibly eat in a week. We made one more drift to see if we can find another wahoo, but I couldn't resist making a deep drop to see those APs again. These fish are just incredible, and they're super curious. You can see here I line up on a couple just to show how easy it can be sometimes. If you couldn't tell, this 10 minute video took us about 5 trips to film. It's incredible how only a minute or two of things going right can make your entire day. For more videos like this, feel free to like and subscribe. See you next time.